Vince Gill, a famous multi-instrumentalist and country singer-songwriter who is 67 years old, has finally talked about his time with the Eagles, which is one of the best rock bands ever. In an honest and rare moment, the famous country music star talks about his personal struggles, the problems he kept hidden, and the shocking truth that changed everything about performing with Don Henley, Joe Walsh, and the rest of the band. What has he been keeping secret the whole time? Why did he choose to speak up now? We will never think of the Eagles the same way again after hearing what Vince has to say. Let's get started. Before we get into Vince Gill's amazing career in more depth, let's take a moment to learn about where he came from and how he joined the legendary Eagles. The story starts in a small town and then goes in strange directions. The Vincent Grant Gill of today is a legendary person in American music. Someone who plays music, sings, and writes songs is well known. He did, however, start out small, like many artists do, before he became famous. When Vince first started out, he played with a few country bands in the area. Even though he worked hard on this field, he didn't become famous until a long time afterward. In case you didn't know, Vince Gill has been a big name in the music business for more than 40 years. Before becoming a famous solo performer in the country music business, Vince started out in bluegrass bands. Vince Gill is known for his powerful lyrics, skillful guitar playing, and soft singing. He has won 22 Grammy Awards, he has worked with many artists such as Reba McIver and Dolly Parton. Even though his roots are in country music, he finally joined the Eagles because he could play a lot of different kinds of music. Let's go further to find out where it all started. Vince Grant Gill was born on April 12, 1957 in Norman, Oklahoma. He was the youngest of three kids in the Gill family. Stan and Jereen Gill, his parents, had a big impact on how he felt about music. Stan was not only a judge, but also a very good artist who could play the guitar and the banjo. Vince became interested in these instruments because he took the time to teach him how to play them. Jereen loved music just as much as she did, and she could sing and play the harp. As a child, the Gill House was always full of music. The Grand Old Opry would often play on the radio so the whole family could enjoy country music. They also liked modern rock and roll, which let Vince hear a lot of different kinds of music. Besides singing, Vince also became interested in golf, which is a hobby that both of his parents share. Vince found his grandmother's guitar when he was a little kid, he really began his quest when he was five years old and learned how to play Old Shep on it. When he was eight years old, he and his half-brother Bob started singing together. They did a cover of the Beach Boys song, Long Tall Texan, on a local radio show. Do you not think that must have been wonderful for him? Vince learned to play the guitar with Jay as he got bigger. Julian Atkins, a musician from the area who helped him get better. When he brought his guitar to school for show and tell, he even played songs like The House of the Rising Sun for a good time. As a kid, Vince learned to play the bass guitar, the dobro, the violin, the banjo, the mandolin, and other instruments. Vince became more interested in bluegrass music after making friends with the son of a person his dad knew. Vince became more interested in bluegrass music after meeting a new person who played the mandolin. He took a chance when he decided to become a bluegrass performer after high school. He even formed his own bluegrass band called Mountain Smoke. Interesting fact, Mountain Smoke used to open for the hard rock band Kiss, but the show didn't go as planned. The crowd began to boo and throw things at them. When Vince replied, he was very angry and gave the crowd the middle finger and even mooned them before storming off stage. You may be wondering how this young, wild artist from Oklahoma turned into the Vince Gill we all know today. What would you say about his story? From 1997 to 1998, Vince got his first taste of popular fame as the lead singer of the soft rock band Pure Prairie League. It was a very important day for him. He not only sang lead on the band's well-known song, Let Me Love You Tonight, but he also wrote songs for them. Because of this, he got better at what he did and became well known in the music business. After his time with Pure Prairie League, Vince took a short break. He played guitar for the Cherry Bombs, who opened for Rodney Kroll. The experience was useful, but it only led to bigger projects in the future. In 1984, Vince decided to go after a future as a solo country music artist. He was ready to make the move, even though it was risky. Vince worked with RCA Records Nashville for a while and made records. Even though he was having some problems and only having some success, it didn't bother him. He didn't give up and kept going. In 1989, he signed with MCA Nashville, which was the start of a new part of his work. That would make everything totally different. When I Call Your Name, Vince's first record on a major label was the start of his big break in the early 1990s. This record changed everything for him and made him famous. Vince had an amazing 65 songs that made it to the top of the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart. He was happy to have four singles. Each of these hits, which came out between 1989 and 1994, 
cemented his place in the history of country music. But that's not all. It worked out well for Vince as a featured act, too. His duet with Reba McIntyre on the hit song The Heart, Won't Lie in 1923, made it to number one. In late 2000, he worked on Sober Saturday Night with Chris Young and performed with a group of singers on Forever Country, which was put on by the Recording Industry Association of America, RIAA. Every album Vince put out in the 1990s was certified platinum or better. His best-selling record, I Still Believe in You, was certified five times platinum. To date, Vince has won 22 Grammy Awards, which is more than any other male country music act. The country music singer has a unique sound and record. How does he or she join one of the best rock bands ever? That's where our story gets really interesting. Glenn Frey, one of the original Eagles members, died in a tragic accident in 2016. The music business was shocked. Frey was the head and mainstay of the band, and he was also a great musician. His and Don Henley's lyrics helped make the Eagles' famous sound, which was a mix of folk, country, and rock styles that will never go out of style. At one point, it looked like Frey's death would be the end of the Eagles' journey. How do you get someone new when their reputation is so important to the band? How do you move forward now that a big part of your sound and past is gone? After Frey died, the Eagles were thinking about these problems. Then everything changed. Vince was shocked when he found out that the Eagles wanted him to join the group. Can you picture the shock? This was a great musician who was given the chance to play with one of the most famous bands in music history. The Eagles shocked everyone in 2017 by saying they would still be performing live and that Vince Gill and Glenn Frey's son, Deacon Frey, would be joining the group. How is it possible for this to be true? They were more than just a band with their classic hits. They had set the tone for a whole musical drama. But the truth hit him when he paid attention to Irving's sad voice. It wasn't a game. After the recent death of the band's founder, Glenn Frey, they wanted him to fill the void. One of the hardest things for Vince was having to step into Glenn Frey's shoes. Glenn not only helped form the Eagles, but he was also a well-known and respected figure in the music business. The main things that made the Eagles stand out were his unique voice and way of acting. People who liked him had grown up listening to it, and when he died, there was a big hole that was almost impossible to fill. Vince knew that Glenn could never be truly replaced. Fans were shocked, interested, and maybe even a little scared. After all, Vince Gill was better known for his sensual voice in country songs than for his rock hits like Hotel California and Life in the Fast Lane. Was he really going to make this work? But those doubts went away as soon as Vince took the stage. He was the only one who could fill Glenn Frey's role. Vince, on the other hand, brought his own voice, style, and deep love of music to the mix. And fans, they loved it. That's when Vince finally asked himself the question he had been thinking about the whole time. Why did they pick me? It was an unexpected answer. Don Henley, co-founder of the Eagles, said that Vince was the only person they had looked at for the job. He admired Vince's singing skills, his honesty, and his interest in the band's past. This was more than just filling a job opening. The whole point was to remember Glenn and keep the Eagles spirit alive. But the best surprise was still to come. Vince learned that answering the call meant signing up for a new adventure, not just taking Glenn's place. For the change that was coming, he had to get ready. At this point, things start to get interesting. As this job went on for a very long time, Vince didn't say much about his time with the Eagles. He did some interviews, but until lately, he hadn't really talked about the emotional side of things. Vince Gill has finally talked about what it was like to be in the Eagles. He is 67 years old. In a recent interview, he talked about the stress of joining the group and how he honors Glenn Frey's memory while also adding his own sound to the music. I have to say that at first it was a little scary. After all, these songs have been around for a long time. Glenn had such a big effect on it, and I know how important his input was. It was up to me to respect him in the best way possible, not to take his place. Vince also talked about how strange it was to be on stage with artists he had like Timothy B. Schmidt, Joe Walsh, and Don Henley for a long time. Even though he had worked in the music business for a long time, he admitted that joining a band with such a long past was something completely new for him. It's a real honor. Anybody else did. These songs were a big part of my childhood. It's beyond my wildest dreams to be able to play them with these great singers. Now one of the most moving parts of the interview was when Vince talked about Glenn Frey's impact. It's true that there were times when he didn't think he could make the music that Glenn had created. But Vince wasn't there to copy Glenn. His words made it clear that he wanted to add his own voice to the songs without changing what they were about at first. Vince Gill said in an interview that Glenn had a very unique voice and a very unique way of singing these songs. It's not likely that I could sound like him, so I'm not even trying. 
Instead, I try to find my way through the songs on my own while remembering him. Every night when we play, there's a little bit of him there. Vince also said some sweet things about how close he is to the Eagles members, especially Don Henley and Joe Walsh. According to what he said, they have become friends because they respect each other and both love music. Vince talked about how well the band received the change and how they would always back it. He said that even though it had been very hard, it had also been very rewarding. More than that, Vince and the other Eagles members seem to have a close relationship. Vince said in another interview that these guys are famous. After admiring them for years, all of a sudden I'm on stage with them and taking their ideas. It's fun, even though it doesn't make sense. We get along really well and really enjoy making music together. There are no signs that Vince Gill will slow down during the Eagles tour. He's even given the impression that he plans to see it through to the end. When asked about it, Vince said that he's never been more at ease and that working for the Eagles has been one of the best parts of his career. The band members would sometimes get together to laugh loudly while talking about the good old days. Vince loved these times with his new band members because they helped him bond with them better. Still, there were times when things were tense. Unspoken words and unresolved disagreements often lingered below the surface. Vince could tell that the band had been through a lot together and that feelings were still hurt. This was especially clear when they talked about the good and bad things that had happened to them in the past. One of the most surprising things Vince found was how much the band members depended on each other. Even though they were different, they had been through breakups, personal losses, and many work problems together. No matter what happened though, they always managed to get back together. Vince understood that their friendship was both their best and worst quality. They were able to keep going, but their shared past was heavy on it. As Vince got used to his surroundings, he realized that the group's apparent calm was actually hiding a more shocking truth that would shock fans. What could the truth be that the music is based on? Join us to find out. At one point during Vince Gill's time with the Eagles, it looked like the end was near. The band had been on tour nonstop, practicing hard and juggling all the duties that came with having such a great name. Everyone had a lot of hopes and fears, and feelings were already running high. But one terrible day during a practice, things reached a breaking point that would test Vince like never before. Everything started with a disagreement over how to arrange a song. Vince planned for them to have a major hit song. He suggested a different approach to try to bring it back to life while keeping the original feel. But not everyone agreed with what he said. Soon disagreements turned into angry words and yelling. A simple, creative conversation turned into a heated argument very quickly but it also meant giving up the chance to be a part of something much bigger than himself. Vince was on the fence. He wasn't sure if it was worth it to keep going if it meant more trouble and doubt. He was about to give up when something out of the blue happened. Don Henley knew the situation was serious, so he asked Vince to meet with him alone to talk about it. As the fighting got worse, they left the practice area behind. During that more private conversation, Don recognized the problems Vince was having and praised his efforts to connect his style to the band's past. They were honest about how upset they were with each other and felt free after expressing their true feelings. During their open conversation, they realized that beneath the stress, there was a desire to make something important together and a love for the music that had brought them together in the first place. Vince was reassured by Don that his work was valued and that the band was both honoring a tradition and improving his artists. Vince felt like he had a purpose again once he knew he wasn't suffering alone. The stress started to go away. He brought a new point of view to the famous band and gave them a new lease on life. Vince, who is known for his beautiful voice and skill as a guitarist, began to add his own style to the band's music, which was very exciting. People soon saw how much he had affected other artists, especially in live shows and new takes on old favorites. Vince Gill has finally told his story about his time with the Eagles. Vince's story of how he filled in for Glenn Frey and became an important part of one of the best rock bands ever is truly inspiring. It's clear that his skill, humility, and respect for the band's history have helped him get to this important place. It's clear that when the Eagles and Vince Gill perform together, magic happens. This is true no matter how long a fan you are. And it looks like the Eagles story has a lot more to go. We can't wait to see what this famous band does next because Vince loves their songs and has become close with them. 